This man is being arrested, and those two men are having a plan to bury him alive in the cemetery. One of the criminals tries to hurry his partner, so that he digs the hole faster, to bury the man as fast as possible. The partner tries to explain that it is difficult, but the man just says that he is slow and takes the shovel to dig it too. They don't even realize that there is a girl nearby watching everything on the sly. She ends up running to get closer and see everything more closely. And when she realizes that the trapped man is alive, she gets even more worried and desperate. She listens in on the sly, while the two criminals are hurrying up, because one of them wants to get it over with and get some beer. She ends up throwing a rock in another direction, drawing the men's attention by the noise, and they both run to see what it is. As they walk away, the girl takes the opportunity to release the man who was trapped, and rushes to wake him up, calling for him to get out of there at once. The man has no idea what is happening, but still runs with the girl. And the two men who had run away realize that there's no one there but them. So they decide to go back to the work they were doing, still alert to find out if there is anyone there besides them. But they are totally surprised when they no longer see the man they had arrested, and wonder what must have happened there. The two of them don't see anything, and one of them is even more worried because his father might do something if he doesn't finish the job. And he threatens his partner if something happens to him. The partner tries to explain that it's not his fault, and tries to say which direction he thinks the man might have run off to. The two men rush off in that direction, intent on finding the man they have kidnapped. Meanwhile, the girl and the man are hiding, and she takes the opportunity to ask who those guys are. The man explains that they are his cousins, that his father had passed away, and that they just want to get rid of him now to get the money. But the girl says that he will never be able to disappear for the rest of his life. And the man replies that he has a lot of money, that he will disappear and they will never find him. At the same time, the cousins are still searching the cemetery for him, wanting to follow through with their plan. The two in hiding hear the voices and go into despair, and the girl orders him to hide already, because the men don't know her and won't do anything to her. While she pretends to be arranging some flowers on a grave, the man approaches her greeting, and asks if she has seen a boy walking by, and the other even asks her to be careful, claiming that this man is very dangerous. The girl then replies that the only people who are in the cemetery, are those who are already on another astral plane. But when the man goes to scold her, they end up hearing some noise. When they try to question the noise, the girl pushes the two men away and runs away, wanting to get away from them. They eventually realize that the girl is helping their cousin escape, and rush to get up and run after her, trying to catch up with their cousin. They go all over the cemetery, like cat and dog, running away from each other. And the girl even receives threats while she is running away, from them saying that she will regret it as their cousin. They get tired of running, and lose them. The man is worried about what his father might do for losing his cousin, but his partner says he can leave it to him, because he will be able to find the man with the girl. They manage to escape from the cemetery and to find a car nearby, begging the driver to stop so they can leave. But the girl claims that she can't leave, because she works at the cemetery. The man insists that she go with him, but she still denies it. But the man says that if she stays there, the men will kill her, so she ends up getting in the car with him. The girl says that she can't leave, that he is not understanding that she can't abandon her family. The man then tells her that she saved his life and that now she will be his responsibility, that she can rest assured that he will take care of her and take her to her family. Then before the men can reach the car, the man rushes the driver to get out of there. They go straight to the city airport, where the man helps the girl leave the car as soon as the driver parks the vehicle. The woman doesn't understand where he wants to go, but the man explains that they will go wherever he can buy the first ticket. Inside the plane, he asks her to be calm, because everything will be fine. The girl then says that there is no other way, so she will trust him. Then they leave town on the plane, running away from the men who wanted to kill them. Meanwhile, the father is wondering if his son has managed to finish the job. But the son begins by saying that it wasn't his fault, 
but they couldn't finish the job, that a girl helped him and they ran away together. He asks his father for help, claiming that he tried every which way, but could not reach the two who ran away. The father only gets even more mad after finding this out, calling his son useless. The man tries to argue with his father that it wasn't his fault, claiming that his cousin seems to be very lucky. He explains that they tried every which way, and just as they were about to finish the plan, he eventually managed to slip out of their hands. His father starts to lecture him, claiming that he gave him only one task, and even then he couldn't do it, and he says that they are broke and ruined, and he doesn't even know what will happen to them. The son asks his father not to talk like this, and continues to beg for his father's forgiveness, promising that he will find his cousin and finish the task his father gave him. But his father says that with all the money the fugitive has, now they are the ones who will have to run and hide, and he doesn't even know what he is going to do about it. He says that they have failed to do what needs to be done, and now the fugitive is the one capable of doing this to them. His son asks forgiveness again promising that he will stand by his father no matter what. A few months later, with so much time together, those two have already become a couple and have fallen in love with each other. And the man took that opportunity to ask an important question to the girl, who gave him permission to ask what he wanted. So he gets down on one knee and asks her to marry him, and she accepts immediately, saying that she loves him. And meanwhile, father and son are in the worst possible situation, but the son does not abandon him, as he had promised, he stays by his father's side regardless of the situation. They live on the streets, trying to find something to eat and drink in the garbage cans of other people's houses. The son manages to find some water in a garbage dump, determined to give it to his father to quench his thirst. But the father doesn't seem very accommodating to his son, claiming that it's all his son's fault that they are in that situation, claiming that he is incompetent. He throws the bottle at him, telling him to keep it. The son tries to be patient, saying that that bottle is recyclable, that they can keep it and try to make some money. He hands the bag and bottle, explaining that they need to pick up this trash to try to make some money. As he pushes his father by the wheelchair, he continues to complain about every attitude of his son, totally bitter about life after all that has happened. And yet the son continues to be a patient person with his father, helping him and pushing the wheelchair wherever they go. Two years later, one of the most difficult tasks in our lives is to find true love. It can appear in the most unexpected way. If it appears to you, Grab it and you are sure to find true happiness.